Yo, what is up NBA fans? It's Mike here. Today, continuing this series, we are going to be going over my picks for the top 5 shooting guards of the 2021 NBA season. If you disagree with my picks, please let me know in the comments, let me know what you would have changed and why. But other than that, we're going to get right into it. First of all, just like my point guard video, and by the way, if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. We're going to start with the honorable mentions, and the only real uh, big honorable mention for the shooting guards for me is Jalen Brown. Now, I'm not actually certain if Brown is going to play shooting guard this season. If I had to guess, I actually would have suspected he would play small forward, but he's been listed at shooting guard for the previous three seasons, so that's where we're going to rank him. And Jalen Brown, very, very good player. Hate to admit it as a Sixers fan, but the dude is very good. Looks like he's going to be an all-star in the next year or two, if not this upcoming season, okay? Very good player. Um, as for why I don't have him as high as the others, I don't know. I just I just don't think he's quite there yet. He could prove me wrong this season. Uh, with Gordon Hayward gone, he's probably going to get more shots. I don't know. I mean, he's a very good defender. He's a solid enough scorer, I just don't quite think he's on the same level offensively as some of these other players. And even though he is an above average defender, I don't know if he's quite good enough on defense to make up for the fact that everyone I have ahead of him, I believe, is better on offense. So, you know, maybe, maybe Jalen Brown proves me wrong. Maybe he comes in this season, he is a top 5 shooting guard. But we will have to wait and see. Now, with the honorable mention out of the way... Let's get into the real list, and at number 5, I have Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal as the 5th best shooting guard in the NBA. A year ago, at the start of last season, I might have told you I thought Beal was the 2nd best shooting guard in the NBA. Dude is very, very good. The thing with Beal is, I mean, he had kind of a down year this season, which is weird to say because he averaged like 31 points a game, but his efficiency went down, his defense has been terrible, and... I don't know. Beal is just a really tough player. On the one hand, I want to give him an efficiency break because he obviously plays on a very bad team and he doesn't really have anyone else doing anything off the dribble on this roster. No one else is getting him open looks without John Wall. And maybe this season his efficiency comes back. But I don't know. He's just not insanely efficient. Like, I feel like, I don't know, for a dude who devotes 100% of his energy to the offensive end, because clearly he's not trying on defense, anyone who's watched a Wizards game this year can see that, I feel like he should be a little better on offense. I don't know. I just, you know, there's like the argument that on one hand, a player, you know, gets to put up empty stats because their team's bad, but on the other hand, it's still impressive to put up those stats when you're the only person on the team that opponents are focusing on. It's, it's a weird thing, so it's like, yeah, maybe he has an excuse, but I just don't think... You look at a guy like Donovan Mitchell, who has also had a very bad team throughout his career, but I haven't really seen his efficiency continue to drop like this, although his team has gotten better in the last few seasons, while Beals has not. So, uh, for the record, all these rankings, just like the point guard list, they're all very close. Okay, with the exception of number one, who is, I'm sure you can all guess who number one is, is a very clear choice. The rest of these players are all very close, and I'm not, like, strongly leaning towards any of them specifically. Uh, I could very well have the order of this list completely wrong a few months even into the season. So, don't, don't take anything I'm saying as, like, this is definitely the fifth best shooting guard in the NBA. Bradley Beal could end up being better. Maybe he ends up not being as good as Jalen Brown, though. We just gotta wait and see. So, yeah, Bradley Beal, number five. Number four, I have Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is a fantastic young player, and it's pretty close between him and some of these other guys. I think he's a little bit of a better defender than Beal is, but he's also not quite the same level of playmaker or shooter. Even though he actually does shoot about the same percentage from three, I just, I don't know, just watching him, I just kind of feel like he's not as good. Maybe, like, it's 100% just like the eye test. I feel like, realistically, if they had the same opportunities, Beal would shoot better from three than Mitchell does. Um, he's also not quite the playmaker that Beal is, in my opinion. And even though he's a little better on defense, let's not sit here and pretend like he's a great defender. He's a pretty average defender, in my opinion, and that's for his size. All right. You know, fairly efficient overall. He's had some real good seasons. I'm just, 
kind of waiting for him to take the next step, because I really feel like since his rookie year, Mitchell has pretty much put up the same numbers every single season. Like, his his career averages have stayed almost the same every single year, uh, with the exception of his free throws taking a pretty significant jump this season. I just, I don't know, I need to say, see him take, like, one more step, and you could make the wins argument for him over Beal and over the next guy on this list, but he's also had a very solid team around him. Gobert's a very good player. Um... I'm just going to blank on everyone on the Utah Jazz. Bogdan Bogdanovich. No, wait, that's the Kings guy. I always mix them up. Bo Bo Bojan? Bojan Bogdanovich? Yes, right? I'm probably botching his name, but you all know who I'm talking about, okay? That really good player on the Utah Jazz who was hurt in the playoffs. Conley can potentially be very good, all right? He's got a very solid team around him, so it's not like Mitchell's just carrying a bunch of scrubs. So because of that, I have him at number three. Or, uh, I'm sorry, this is number four, actually. I have him at number four. Number three, I have Devin Booker, and this is going to be the best season of Devin Booker's career, I fully believe. Maybe not statistically. In fact, I would not be surprised at all if his scoring falls this season, because after averaging, let me see here, 27 points the last two seasons, I would, I really do expect it to fall down to somewhere like 24, 25, honestly. Simply because he, with Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton both on the roster, they're going to be taking shots away from him. However, I do expect him to have his most efficient season, which is pretty impressive because he's already a very efficient player. He's shot 49% from the field last season, despite being on a pretty bad team and Ayton missing almost half the season because of his suspension, suspension because he's a dumbass. So, don't do drugs, kids. Um, <laughs> anyway... Super efficient player, 92% from the free throw line. Like, this dude, I think his his um, three-point three percentage is so bad, purely because he's just not getting enough open looks. And I think between Aiton and Chris Paul this season, he's going to get them. And I really wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Devin Booker shoots something close to 40% from three. Saying 40%, maybe not quite that, but like 39%, even a high 38%, I could absolutely see from Devin Booker this season. I think he's going to be way more efficient, and he's going to have a fantastic year leading the Suns to the playoffs this season. At number two, and this is probably going to be controversial, I think Paul George is still the second best shooting guard in the NBA. For the record, if you think he plays a different position, he was officially listed as shooting guard next season, and I am assuming that the uh, that the Clippers' starting lineup is going to have him at shooting guard, Kawhi at small forward, and Marcus Morris at power forward. That is what I predict. You know, if I end up being wrong, sue me. This is what I think it's going to happen, all right? And Paul George did not have a good playoffs. In fact, he had a terrible playoff. He is a straight-up meme now because of how bad his playoffs were, which is pretty impressive because he's known over the last few years as a guy who's bad in the playoffs, and he just blew all underachievement out of the water this season by being even worse than anyone predicted. It was a terrible, terrible playoffs for him. It was a bad regular season, but this dude keeps getting injured. I really think he's going to be better this season than he was last season. I think missing Montrezl Harold, there's going to be a few more shots from him. I could actually see Serge Ibaka being better for this team because he can space the floor a little bit. Paul George is still by far the best defender on this list. Jalen Brown's the only one who even comes close, and let's be real, he's still not a better defender than Paul George. Um, he's just, you know, when he's healthy on the rare occasion, we saw two years ago this dude was an MVP candidate. If he can get back to at least a solid all-star level, he is still the second best shooting guard in the NBA in my opinion. Also, uh, Clay Thompson, not on this list obviously, he's gonna miss the entire season, so I thought it would be pretty stupid to include him. So Paul George is number two in my opinion. You know, maybe he comes in and he just sucks ass and he is not even top five shooting guard, but... Like I said, they're also all very close. Just because of his defense and what we've seen from him before, I think he's going to be better this season, but he could definitely prove me wrong because I also thought maybe he wouldn't suck total butt in the playoffs, and he did. And at number one, James Harden. Needs no explanation, okay? In my opinion, he's the best scorer in the NBA right now, although Luka is closely approaching him. Dude's fantastic player. He is a top five player in the league at the moment, debatably. I would say he's still better than Anthony Davis. All right. Absolutely fantastic player. Um, I don't know if he's going to get traded to the Nets or what's going to happen with him, but I don't know, man. Uh, James Harden, he's just great. I do not need to go into detail here. James Harden's an amazing player. 
So, that is my list. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. And watch for probably tomorrow my small forward video to come out. Thank you.